yes, Diesel 10. Our favorite homicidal diesel locomotive with a giant hydraulic claw in his cab. It's no secret at this point that I am quite the big fan of Diesel 10. From a lot of my videos that I make about him, to me always talking about how I love his role in the TV series. And Diesel 10 is one of those characters who I think has gotten a bit of a controversial rep over the years. I mean, to be fair, he went from being a homicidal maniac who literally had the intent to destroy the island of Sodor, to stealing Christmas decorations and cowering in fear from a fat man with a top hat on. Like a bitch. To say that people were upset over this change would be a complete understatement. You couldn't go anywhere from both big YouTubers and small YouTubers complaining about the fact that Diesel 10 wasn't the same villain that he used to be. When I first heard all these responses, my initial reaction to it was, is this nigga serious? From people not being happy with the change in his face to people complaining about his character doing a complete 180, you couldn't go anywhere online without people, both big and small YouTubers, complaining about this fact. But I'm here today to explain why I think that those claims are wrong. I feel like CGI Diesel 10 was honestly a very well handled character. Not perfect, but insanely misrepresented and misconstrued by the views of people. So, I'm Troublesome Junction, and welcome to the third episode of The Milk Tank, and I'm going to be explaining why CGI Diesel 10 is good. Now before we get into the meat of the video, we should first discuss what made Diesel 10 memorable in the first place. A lot of people remember Diesel 10 because when he showed up to the island of Sodor, he was a genuine opposing threat. He was someone you didn't want to come across if you're in a dark alley. The thing that every engine genuinely feared because he would scrap you. And what could you do to defend yourself? Run? Oh, wait. Huh. Well, shut up. It's not realistic anyways. In short, Diesel 10 was a force to be reckoned with. He was something that the Thomas series hadn't seen. Yeah, you had your devious Diesels who showed up and caused a bit of mayhem, but nobody held the status that Diesel 10 did because he wasn't afraid to genuinely go out of his way and hurt his fellow engines permanently. Diesel 10 was assertive, blunt, and cruel. He had no problem using brute force to get his way in the end. As a kid, I always found this trope more cool than genuinely intimidating, but apparently a lot of the more mainstream people had a lot of things to say about Diesel 10 in terms of being too scary for their children. You can even see this in some YouTube videos of people recalling their childhood. They'll sometimes bring up the fact that Diesel 10 was always this scary figure. Though I kind of think that, well... This sounds totally asinine. It totally is. Though yes, the tropes that I described are very true about Diesel 10, I wouldn't go as far to say he was scary in terms of something that would keep you up at night. I found him to just be very cool and interesting because of the change that he brought to the Thomas universe. I just can't entirely get behind the fact that people were terrified of this. I call it how to stop being stupid. <laughs> Now that's gonna ruin my facial. Oh. I could personally never truly get behind why people were afraid of him. Yes, he has his sinister moments, but he also has a lot of comedy-centered moments where his short temper gets the better of him and Splatter and Dodge's stupidity plays a part in it. It was just something where, I don't know, I think people just kind of overreacted in the mindset of a kid. But... Without further ado, let's move on to the next iteration of Diesel 10. So after the box office failure that was Thomas and the Tragic Fail Road, because of the weird elements that were implemented into the movie, it was demoted to a non-canon status. And the next time that we saw Diesel 10 was in this feature special, Calling All Engines. In this special, Diesel 10 plays the role as kind of the big bully force that really isn't a bully. Everyone's just kind of afraid to talk to him because they're afraid that, well, he would probably kill them with his ginormous fucking claw arm. But 
The role he plays in here is a lot more simplified than it was in Magic Railway. In this movie, I think his role is really good because the build up to his character is mainly him grabbing scrap off the side of the tracks or in scrap yards, crunching it with his claw. And of course, you know, that'd be the time when Thomas and Percy would show up. And they were, of course, like, well, I don't want anything to do with that, so let's get the heck out of here. It was a very good build up to kind of give the feeling that, yes, Diesel 10 is still intimidating. But we all know how the movie goes. Thomas grows the nuts to go and talk to Diesel 10 because they need him to fix the runway. He's end up being the happy-go-lucky guy, saves the day, yada, yada, yada. You've seen the damn movie. In short, I feel like Diesel 10 is nowhere near as intimidating as he was in Magic Railroad. He just seems more grumpy, if anything. It reminds me of the change from Demon King Piccolo to normal Piccolo in Dragon Ball. One of them, if you looked at him the wrong way, he would kill you in a heartbeat, while the other one's just more grumpy and just kind of following in the footsteps of his father. After Calling All Engines came and went, we didn't see Diesel 10 at all in the TV series or in any other specials. It would take us until many years later to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be laughing on the other side of your boilers soon, silly steamers. <laughs> So I guess something good did come out of this shit fest. At the tail end of Misty Island Rescue, it was teased at the fact that we'd be seeing a return of Diesel 10. And boy oh boy were expectations high. When you have a clip like that where Diesel 10 is coming in asserting himself and saying that oh some shit's about to go down, you better impress the fan base. And I can definitely say it landed in mixed reviews among the fans. Some people were upset that Diesel 10 isn't the homicidal maniac he used to be, while others, including myself, were just happy to see him come back in general to CGI. Though, yeah, say what you want about Sharon Miller, I will give credit where credit is due. She brought back a lot of fan-favorite characters. Now that the retrospect is over on Diesel 10, let's get into why I think that CGI Diesel 10 was handled wonderfully. The biggest complaint without a doubt with him is the fact that he isn't intimidating like he used to be. And quite honestly, I can agree with that, but I think that it isn't right to just say, oh, well, we should just continue to have homicidal Diesel 10 and completely disregard the changes. You have to keep in mind the fact that during the CGI era, when they were bringing back all the characters people liked, everyone got overly simplified and kind of had to have a nice guy approach. Just look at Devious Diesel for instance. You had a character who was not afraid to throw anyone under the bus at any time, and when he got figured out for it, he didn't give a shit. He was okay with making people's days miserable. To now in CGI, if he gets caught doing wrong things, He's just kind of like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, please be my friend, I'm such a wuss. These parameters really got implemented for every character. You really couldn't have conflict in Thomas anymore, because everything has to make the children smile and happy. Children can't feel anything but happiness. So it made every character feel much more simplified than what made them good. Though, I mean, I can kind of understand this from a business standpoint because you want your characters to be as marketable as possible so that when kids go into the store, they're going to say, oh, look, it's that funny claw guy. Get him, mom. I want to put my Christmas decorations on him. Though the alliteration from the narrator gets insanely annoying and repetitive, when it comes to Diesel 10's character, it is kind of intimidating if you really think about it. The whole premise of him becoming friendly to Percy is because he wants to manipulate him when he's at his lowest point. Percy's feeling very insecure and upset in the fact that he feels that he's losing his best friend. Even though, yes, this trope got insanely repetitive in the movies following, it's still something that I think was really interesting at the time. 
Diesel 10 saw someone who was in his most vulnerable state and uses Percy basically as a pawn to get his way. And when Percy is failing to do the things Diesel 10 asks, you can tell in his voice and his mannerisms that he's becoming very aggravated and you just feel like he could snap at any second. Diesel 10 plot crossly. Then you must bring Thomas here. That way we will have his full attention. Kevin! I don't have time for silly games. Diesel 10 in his mannerisms is a very snake-like character. He's not afraid to use his smooth talking, but also use Pinchy as a form of intimidation to pressure people into doing the things he wants. Though it's very evident he isn't as intimidating as he was in Magic Railroad, it's still apparent that they tried to put forth the effort into making him as intimidating as they possibly could, while also being as appealing as he could. Now the only part of the movie that I really cannot justify in the slightest is the ending, where the Fat Controller basically shows up out of nowhere and goes, yeah, Bad Diesel, naughty naughty Diesel, go to the corner and think about what you've done, we have a railway to run. My father. Man, I guess literally every movie has to make the bad guy seem like a big baby at the end of the movie. Though yes, this ending really is piss poor, the majority of the movie is where you will see more of the sly and cunning Diesel 10 that we all really love. And honestly, I think that that is the main focus point for what this character is. You should also keep in mind the fact that Thomas and the Magic Railroad's Diesel 10 is not canon. The only canon Diesel 10 that we have is the one that was featured in Calling All Engines. And in that movie, he was portrayed as being much more grumpy. So, in a way, for the sake of continuity, I think it would make sense that he wouldn't be the same character as he was in Magic Railway. He relates honestly much more to Calling All Engines Diesel 10 with much more evil tendencies. For what they were working with, I honestly think that it was really well done. Hats off, Sharon Miller. Never thought I'd be uttering those words. Another thing users aren't fond of is his new face. Give us back the old face! Another point that people bring up is the fact that Diesel 10's face just was too different from the original, and a lot of people really don't like it. Though yes, I do prefer the original face when it comes to merchandise, I honestly think that the new face was quite a genius move in all honesty. The reason why I say that is because Thomas and Friends' faces in the model series were purposefully over-exaggerated for a reason. The reason why was because, well, their faces didn't move, and you'd have to capture a lot of emotion in those faces so people can distinguish what emotion the engine's feeling. And when the CGI era was introduced, that brought along more fluent animation, meaning that they made the faces look a lot more natural in terms of movement and appearance. To better show what I mean, I'm gonna use IRL examples. Let's say you're talking with a friend and that friend happens to get mad at you while you're talking. And then they start making these faces. And when they make these faces, let's be honest, nobody makes these faces unironically when they're talking with someone. They're clearly over-exaggerated faces that aren't natural. And that's when you look at your friend and you say, Ayo, cut that shit out. So yes, for what the original series was trying to capture with the faces, I think they did it perfectly. But the CGI series made the faces look a lot more natural in appearance. And just as the other characters went through the change, Diesel 10 followed suit. And honestly, I think it works really well because his face is very fluent. And if you're one of those people who says his face doesn't look like his original prop at all and is a bad representation, look at this! You cannot tell me that this face does not look like this face. And if you do, you're wrong and you know you're wrong. Good day, sir! In conclusion, Diesel 10's been through a lot over the years. Diesel 10 is one of those characters that I think will remain as unforgettable in the Thomas and Friends community. With the new direction that Thomas and Friends is taking with its more baby-like approach with season 25, and even in elements of Big World Big Adventures, I don't think we'll ever see Diesel 10 in either iteration, from the original Thomas and the Magic Railroad movie up to even Day of the Diesels.
though the original iteration of Diesel 10 will always be the objectively better one. I hope this video can shed light onto the fact that the reboot of Diesel 10 isn't as bad as people think it is for what they were working with. Truth be told, I and many others are just happy to have him back in some way, shape, or form. Kids today might not know him as the menace he was, but I'm glad he still lives on in some way, shape, or form. No matter what iteration you prefer of Diesel 10, he will always rank as 10 out of 10 for devious deeds and brutal strength as the blast from the past who hates steam engines.